Hey guys, it's Brian. I'm here doing an open house in the city. If somebody comes in, I'm stopping this video. Uh, Want to get to you with part five of the 25 questions that real estate agents should be asking their clients. Thank you for watching. If you've been keeping up with me for parts one through five, I think this is a great way to learn your scripts, to master those scripts. Again, I've been saying all along, I know scripts is a sales term that a lot of people shy away from, but I look at scripts as these you know, simple one-liners that will guide any conversation that you're having with a client, whether you're talking about buying, selling, or investing. If you've got these internalized and kind of in the back of your mind, then you can always take the conversation to the next step. Uh, and that's what's really important. You're a professional salesperson, you're a professional real estate agent, even if you don't think about yourself as a salesperson. If customer service is important to you, this is the same thing customer service uh, companies and, and uh, what companies are doing with their customer service people. So here goes another one right here. This is part five. This one can be used in conjunction with all of the other four that we've talked about and then even some that are going to come after this. We're not really in any particular order here. The first four parts primarily going to be used with buyers, although you could tweak those a little bit to work with sellers here and there. Same thing with this one. Here it is. Has uh, I just forgot what it was. <laughs> Would you be against sitting down and talking more about how we can help you? Let me say that again because I said we got to keep these internalized and memorized so that you can come out with them a little quicker, a little smoother than I just did. Would you be against sitting down and talking about how we can help you? Again, great question for buyers or sellers. You're really trying to lock in that appointment and schedule that consultation. So you can sit down at that point and have a long, in-depth conversation with them. You don't want to try to really gain a client in the form of you know signing a contract or trying to get them to commit to you you know, in an elevator or on an initial phone call or in the five minutes that they just walked into your open house and now they've got somewhere else to be, right? I know this might sound counterintuitive to some of the people out there who've been exposed to sales training that is like, um, you know, keep them talking as long as possible, keep them on the phone or, or keep them listening to you as long as possible. Uh, or, you know, the other sales uh, training uh, thought of never go with a negative, never go with a negative. I, I mean, in a sense, I agree with that. But let me tell you why I said, would you be against as opposed to would you be interested or as opposed to we're going to sit down and talk more about what we can do to help you. Wouldn't that be great? And they they end with that that hook or whatever they call it. I can't even remember the sales term for that one, but it's terrible. I hate when people do that to me. It's garbage. Um, would you be against sitting down and having a conversation about what we can do to help you with that. Or another way to ask it, would you be against sitting down and going over the pros and cons of this neighborhood compared to some others? Would you be against sitting down to go over your options for getting your house sold for the top dollar? Would you be against sitting down to go over all of your options including you know, selling the home yourself, selling it to an investor or a wholesaler? Would you be against having that conversation? Most people in that situation or in that conversation are gonna say, well, no, I wouldn't be against it. Uh, I'd rather wait a week or two or I wouldn't be against it. I really need to see what my wife thinks or I'm not against it, you know, so not only are you getting them now to kind of agree to it, but you're more importantly, obviously, uncovering any objection that they would have. What is keeping them from getting that appointment? They're not against it. Or maybe they would say, well, yeah, I mean, I think that would, that sounds like a waste of time. Probably not going to get that very often, depending on who you're talking to. Um, you know, we haven't gotten into any for sale by owner scripts or anything like that. Again, who cares even if you do hear no, Right you're not any more likely to hear no to that question because you started with, would you be against, then we're gonna get together. Wouldn't that be great? And, and go for that, yes. Uh, people love the word no. They love an opportunity or an invitation to say the word no, especially to a salesperson, uh, especially if you're calling over the phone, right? They might have you confused for a telemarketer and then you say, well, would you be against sitting down and just talking about what your options are and how we can help you get the house sold? And they go, hmm. 
no, I mean, I guess not. You know, can you, can you send me some more information in the meantime? I don't even know who you are. You called me out of the blue. Uh, you know, so I didn't invent this strategy. There's a guy named Chris Voss. You might have heard of him. He was an FBI negotiator. He wrote the book, Never Split the Difference. I feel like that book is... Uh, it's very popular, very common. I feel like a lot of people talk about it. It is an awesome book. Um, you have to read it more than once. Anybody that says, I read that book and it changed my life and blah, 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 and I learned so much, you know, they might be telling the truth, but they're also full of crap because I went back and read that book like 10 or 15 times and I think you have to. I think you should read and revisit that book like every three months. Um, there's also videos on YouTube and talks that he's done, some with real estate agents and real estate coaches, some with other industries. But you'll hear Chris Voss, again, FBI negotiator, author of Never Split the Difference. He, he's the one that uses this. He's the one that will tell you why this works from a you know neuro-linguistic perspective or whatever it is. Um, I just know that I have used similar things when I got into the business because I hated salespeople when I got into the business because they always were trying to go for yes and they were always trying to keep you on the phone and keep you talking and they said stupid things like ABC always be closing and it doesn't even make sense. To, I didn't really know what that even meant. Um, some of the real cocky salespeople will say like, I can sell you know snow to an Eskimo, which is stupid. Why would you, why would you need to do that? Um, so, you know, I looked at myself a little differently and said, how would I really connect with somebody? If somebody came in a little more, little more negative, little, you know, on the realistic side, not overly positive, not overly negative. You don't want to go and say, you don't want to meet with me, do you? Um, I mean, you could say it, probably not in that tone. That's a very negative tone. It doesn't make it sound very inviting. But there's also the overly positive where, let's get together and meet. And they're like, hey, I've never met with anyone who sounded like that before. You sound like you're going to try to scam me or rip me off. So uh, that's the script for today. This is part five, the fifth script. Again, you can use this one in conjunction with the other four and some of the other ones to come. This could be a closing script in your conversation. This could be one that you use multiple times in your conversation, uh, which I'll give you some more examples on how to do that later. So thanks for watching. Like this video if you found it helpful. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think of this video and the other ones that I've done so far. Subscri subscribe to the channel so that you can get notified when part six comes out. And I'll catch you guys later. Wish me luck here at this open house. We had some groups earlier. A little slow right now. It's a Friday evening uh, on Labor Day weekend. Um, but so far, so good. So wish me luck. I'll catch you guys later.